The wait is finally over. After what feels like eternity, from the theatrical release of the Zero Two sequel The Beginning, the movie is finally available on Blu-ray and streaming. So fans around the world who didn't get to see the movie in theaters can finally experience it themselves. And I put the emphasis on experience the movie yourself, because during all these months of waiting, we have read a lot of reviews that made us believe the beginning is going to be a disappointment. As Digimon fans, I implore you to put those preconceived notions aside and watch this movie without prejudice. Keep in mind, this video will contain spoilers about the movie. There was a lot of paths a Digimon Zero Two sequel could have taken. The movie could have explored the chosen children leaving their childhood innocence behind. It could have built upon the Dark Ocean theme, Ken's vulnerability to darkness, the dark seeds planted into children during the original season, and so much more. But in true Digimon style, a sequel is never just a sequel. Each form of media has to open a new door of creativity and offer something new. Many would argue that this movie recycled the storyline of Tri and Last Evolution Kizuna, where a new child appears, whose Digimon turns out to be evil and has to be defeated. And I don't blame you if that was your conclusion after reading the synopsis and watching the trailers. But I believe this movie is much more than that. It's probably the darkest chapter in Digimon history to date, and it's most mature as well. As presented in teasers and trailers, there is a boy called Louis, who claims to be the first child to form a bond with a Digimon, and even claims that every other bond was created because of him. With everything we know about Digimon and bonds so far, it's easy to dismiss his claims and hate the character. But after watching the movie, the predominant emotion I felt about Louis is extreme pity. Just looking at Louis walking behind his mother trying to catch up to her makes your heart break without even knowing the rest of his story. Louis' character gave Digimon something never before explored to this degree in the franchise, extreme childhood trauma, violence and loneliness that at times feels like watching a completely different franchise. Molested by his mother and with a sick father, Louis is often beaten to bruises, left hungry and cold, not to mention unloved and neglected. He doesn't even have any siblings or friends outside of his family who he could turn to as some sort of comfort. So, one night on Louis' fourth birthday, while he's shivering on the balcony of his apartment, barely dressed on a cold winter's night, he makes a wish to have a friend, and a Digimon called Ukomon appears, who promises to be just that, an unconditional friend who would never leave Louis and would do anything to make him happy. And this Digimon is serious when it comes to the anything part. Ukomon takes control of Louis' parents and neighborhood kids to make them love Louis and organizes birthday parties for him, which are rare since Louis' birthday is on the 29th of February. But Louis senses something is wrong, as his parents don't behave like themselves. One day, Louis and Ukomon are watching the events of the movie Diablomon Strikes Back on TV, and Ukomon says he was the one who made that all happen. He put those Digimon and humans together. When Louis sees his parents collapse, Ukomon penetrates his tentacles into their heads to make them say kind words to Louis. But none of this is what Louis really wanted. Feeling misunderstood by Ukomon, who took things too far, Louis takes a baseball bat and breaks his digivice. The device bounces off the table, hitting Louis in the face, making him lose his eye. To prove his unconditional friendship, Ukomon gives Louis his own eye. This makes Louis even more repulsed by Ukomon and wants him to go away, and Ukomon melts away in front of his eyes, exploding into pieces that fall all over Louis. With his parents also seemingly dying, this whole scene is truly disturbing to watch. Several years later, a huge egg appears in the sky above Tokyo, and Louis immediately recognizes what it is. The Zero Two kids see Louis on TV climbing the Tokyo Tower with a digivice in his hands, so they rush to the scene. While trying to rescue Louis, who falls from the tower, Daisuke and Ken fall together with him into the digi egg. This takes them back in time, so they learn about Louis' past. But for other Zero Two kids, this moment only lasted for a second, which reminded me of a movie called Contact. Louis keeps telling the Zero Two kids how Digimon and humans shouldn't be together and how this unnatural bond was his mistake because he made a wish from a Digimon who misunderstood him. But the Zero Two kids don't want to believe Louis, especially Hikari, who is positive that Louis and Ukomon had nothing to do with her bond with Tailmon. When the clock strikes midnight on the 29th of February, the egg hatches into a giant version of Ukomon. With tentacles coming out of his head and spreading all over the world, Big Ukomon is creating digi eggs to force a partnership between every human and a Digimon, just as the message from the beginning of the movie said. The only person who can stop Ukomon is Louis, because unlike the teasers made us believe, Ukomon is not an evil or corrupted Digimon, he's just doing what he thinks is the right thing to do. Louis goes back to his childhood again. 
He reasons with his mother to notice the love of her son and goes back to the balcony where he first met Ukomon, but this time he chooses not to make a wish. Ukomon already knows this and they both come to a conclusion that maybe they haven't communicated enough, otherwise they would have understood each other better. Louis makes a remark how the Zero Two kids seem to understand each other much better than the two of them, so they decide to give each other a second chance. Back in the present timeline, Louis tells the Zero Two kids to kill Ukomon and revert him to a DG egg so they can start anew. When Ukomon dies, the digivices of all the chosen children across the world disappear. Because it wasn't the device that held them together, their bonds have always been in their hearts. After the credits roll, Ukomon's egg hatches again and he is reunited with his friend. As I mentioned earlier, this movie could have gone many different ways and many fans dislike it because it took this route. Many believe this is a movie about Louis and the Zero Two kids are reduced to side characters. But the whole point of Louis's story was to prove how priceless the bond between Zero Two kids and their Digimon is. This is something present in many franchises. Fans want a sequel to a beloved TV show that aired 25 years ago, but in their heads that sequel would feature those same characters the way they were 25 years ago. But that's impossible to do because those characters aged just as we did. So when a sequel is made, fans dismiss it because it's not what they wanted. Digimon fans today are rarely kids. We are mostly adults who grew up with the franchise, so we can't expect the franchise not to grow with us. Adult life is not always sunshine and rainbows as it used to be when we were kids, and the beginning reminds us that for some people life was never that sweet even when they were kids. The misunderstanding between Louis and Ukomon could be compared to Digimon fans versus the franchise. Ukomon is the franchise who gives us anime series and movies, and the fans are Louis. But Ukomon doesn't know what Louis wants, which results in his reboot. The art book released this year to commemorate the 25th anniversary of Digimon anime says that Digimon has been in a reboot phase for the last 5 years, which has the goal to unify all the universes into one and create one big Digimon project. In Kizuna, fans didn't like the bond breaking, just as they didn't like the fact that the Zero Two sequel is about a newcomer. Another thing fans disliked was Louis' claim that he was the first chosen child. Fans took this information as set in stone, declared the movie non-canon and started hating the character before even watching the movie. But Louis' claim doesn't have to be the truth, it's just what he thinks happened. He couldn't have been the first chosen child because the first five traveled to the digital world in 1995 when Louis was just three. We also know the lore about Digimon Adventure, which I explained in a video linked below, and the whole story with Hikari and homeostasis. Even a producer from the movie, Eri Shimomura, said that Louis is not even a chosen child, he just formed a friendship with a Digimon who granted him a wish. When Last Evolution Kizuna came out, the creators said in interviews that they didn't want to give the heroes just another villain to defeat, but wanted to explore a deeper story. So they made a movie about the inevitable breaking of a bond between a Digimon and their human partner as they grow older. This bond breaking concept was not super well received by fans. With a release closely tied to the reboot of the original adventure, it felt like the franchise wanted to cleanse its fanbase from older generations. But Last Evolution Kizuna is open for other interpretations and I did a video about one possible theory which you can check out in the links below. The beginning could also be understood in a different way. Seki Hiromi, who was the first female producer for Toei Animation, said in an interview that she wanted to explore the idea of being first at something and the loneliness that it brings. She said it was difficult to write a story about Zero Two kids because they could still maintain a good friendship after growing up. So she wanted to write a story about a newcomer. So Louis' story was not actually about Louis, but a plot device that reaffirms the strong bond between the Zero Two kids and their Digimon. We also learned from that interview that when it was conceived, the project was actually supposed to be a mini-series of 4 episodes, like Try was for the original Adventure Kids. And that would actually make more sense, because the atmosphere of the movie is more like a part of the series, not a grand theater-going experience. The Zero Two Kids were absent from Try, just as the original Adventure Kids are absent from this project. Then in Last Evolution Kizuna, the focus is more on the original 8, with some involvement from the Zero Two Kids. Maybe the next adventure movie would feature Zero Two Kids again with a bigger involvement by the original group. This would be followed by a big finale that brings both groups together and ends with the Zero Two epilogue possibly for 2028, but that's just my theory. The lack of any ties between this movie and Kizuna makes me think of this. Even though it is set two years later, we don't get a single mention of the bond breaking from Kizuna. The characters never discuss the issue or say they are afraid they might lose their Digimon. 
maybe because that's a topic for another project, or because, as the movie teaches us, the Zero Two kids don't have the same problems as the other six. The Zero Two kids are also not kids anymore, but they take their Digimon with them everywhere they go, unlike Taichi and Yamato, who leave their Digimon with other kids every chance they get, and want to go to university without them. Daisuke and Vimon are even working together in their ramen shop. In every scene that features a Zero Two kid, their Digimon is right there with them. For me, the message of this movie was that you can grow up and be a responsible adult, but there can still be that child within you looking out. Digimon are not fighting machines to have fun with in battles, a childhood game you grow out of. They are like your family, who you love and support unconditionally, and stay with through the good and bad times in life. You don't abandon or neglect them because you get bored of them, or because it's silly to still love Digimon at your age. I think the purpose of this movie is to remind us just that, as we grow and age together with the franchise. Digimon Adventure Zero Two The Beginning is a beautiful story that deserves its place in Digimon Universe, and I can't wait to see what comes next. Have you seen the movie and how did you like it? Tell me in the comments below. If you want to support me, you can do so on Patreon or the Buy Me Coffee website, the links are in the description below. Thank you for watching, stay tuned for more Digimon videos. P.S. Make sure to follow my community page on YouTube as I also post updates about upcoming videos there.